Hi there, Dominic here with a short introduction to the Element Move tool in Modo 601. As you see, I have one item here with two separate meshes and I'm going to activate the Element Move tool by pressing the T key on my keyboard. And right now I can start moving the mesh. If I want to increase my range, I can do so with this slider or I can right click in the viewport and, and uh, drag with the right mouse button to increase or decrease the range. Right now, connected is set to use connectivity. I'm going to set it to ignore and it's going to ignore any connectivity going to explain that later. Here you have position. You can watch those values when you are dragging in the viewport or you can set them over here. As you see, better to minus one. Going to control Z, undo, undo. So you can drag in the viewport or you can set values over here. Pivot and gimbal for the trans element transform tool is disabled. Slip UVs, that means to not disturb any existing UV mapping applied to the geometry. So if you don't want to disturb your UV mapping, you have to make sure to check slip UVs. Morph, right now there are no morph maps on the meshes. When you select none, then morph data is not affected unless the morph map is selected. When you set it to transform, then morph data is transformed along with the base mesh. And when you set it to key positions, then morph data is converted into an absolute morph map and all vertices retain their pre-transformed positions. Element falloff. You can set the mode to auto, that means that when I hover over a face, then the face will be selected. When I hover over an edge, the edge highlights and the edge will be selected. When I hover over a vert, the vert will become highlighted and I can drag the vert. Remember, there is a fall off. If I only want to uh, move that vert, then I have to decrease the fall off. Sometimes Selecting is a bit difficult. The range, and that's, as I've explained that already, when you right click you can do it interactively in the viewport. Connected, when it's set to ignore, it's going to ignore any connections, so that means when I select a face near the other mesh, that mesh will also get deformed. But when I set use connectivity, then only geometry that is connected will get deformed. So I'm selecting a face close to this geometry, but it is not connected, so it will leave that geometry untouched. The same when I select geometry over here, this geometry will be transformed, but not this one. When I set it to rigid connections, then the whole mesh item will be transformed. And when I set it to edge loop, then I can select entire edge loops. And of course the fall off also plays a part in the transform. And then you have mix mode. This is an interesting one. This is if you, for instance, would also use an extra falloff. I'm going to uh, add a linear falloff. I'm going to select it here and going to drag the falloff. Now I have to select transform again and set the <laughs> let me see the I'm going to pause for a moment. Okay, I'm back. Um, made a mistake. 
when I selected a fall off, I did not had to choose this one, but add a fall off. I'm going to add a linear fall off. Now, when I choose that fall off, I can drag that fall off in the viewport. I have to select my transform tool again, and now you have a linear fall off. And mix mode, now it's set to add. When it's set to multiply, you get a different result. Something you have to experiment what you want when it's set to add. This mode makes more sense probably when you add a linear fall off. You can subtract, then some elements move in the opposite direction. Max, I'm not sh really sure what max and min are really doing. Just something you have to experiment with. So, a short introduction to the element move tool. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you find it useful and bye for now.